Welcome to the world of Welcome Back, Cotter, a classic 1975 TV series that will take you on a roller coaster of laughter, shock, and heartache. This sitcom follows the adventures of a high school teacher and his misfit students, known as the Sweathogs. The humor is raw, the stories are real, and the characters are unforgettable. Ever wondered which character stole the show for you? With a cast of vibrant personalities, each with their quirks, it's hard to pick a favorite. The classroom antics and offbeat humor will leave you in stitches. As you dive into the episodes, you'll find a series that goes beyond the laughs, touching on the shocking and sometimes sad realities of life. The blend of humor and heartfelt moments will keep you hooked episode after episode. Now, here's the hook. There are many more funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting for you as the series unfolds. So, keep watching and discover the unexpected twists that Welcome Back Cotter has in store for you. Before you go, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic TV series? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to read them. Welcome Back, Cotter, a TV series that debuted in 1975, made a significant impact and left an enduring legacy in the realm of American sitcoms. Created by Gabe Kaplan and Alan Sachs, the show revolves around a charismatic high school teacher and his diverse group of students known as the Sweathogs. The series stood out for its authentic portrayal of the challenges faced by inner-city high school students, offering a relatable and humorous perspective on the ups and downs of adolescence. The character dynamics and witty humor quickly resonated with audiences, making it a staple in American television during its four-season run. What sets the show apart is its exploration of relevant social issues through the lens of humor. It addressed topics such as racial tensions, socioeconomic disparities, and the struggles of young people trying to navigate a complex world. This unique approach contributed to its cultural impact, fostering discussions on societal challenges in a way that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. The legacy of Welcome Back, Cotter can be seen in its influence on subsequent sitcoms that delved into the lives of students and educators. The camaraderie among the Swedox and their teacher created a blueprint for shows that aimed to capture the essence of school life. Additionally, John Travolta's breakout role as Vinnie Barbarino catapulted him to stardom, showcasing the series' ability to launch the careers of talented actors. The show's relevance endures today as it continues to resonate with audiences. The timeless themes of friendship, self-discovery, and overcoming adversity remain universal. Its humor and genuine portrayal of the human experience make it a classic that transcends its original era. In conclusion, welcome back, Cotter's impact, legacy, and continued relevance can be attributed to its authentic depiction of societal issues, memorable characters, and the humor that transcends generations. The show's ability to blend entertainment with social commentary solidifies its place in the annals of television history. Welcome back, Cotter, a sitcom from the 1970s, had some interesting behind-the-scenes details. Arnold Horshack, a character in the show, claimed that the name Horshack meant the cattle are dying. During the audition process, Farrah Fawcett and Kate Jackson tried out for the role of Julie Cotter. John Travolta, who gained fame on Cotter, made a notable appearance in the movie Carrie while still working on the TV series. Despite not being a main star in Carrie, the producers capitalized on Travolta's rising stardom from Cotter, promoting him as a featured attraction in the film's coming attractions. The ads proudly proclaimed, introducing John Travolta, even though Carrie wasn't his first theatrical film. These insights provide a glimpse into the lesser-known aspects of the people and events associated with Cotter. Gabe Kaplan, the driving force behind the scenes of the show, found himself at odds with producers in the later seasons. He envisioned the Swethogs graduating in the 1978 season and transitioning to a local junior college, all under his continued guidance. However, the producers opted to stick to the existing high school formula, leading to Kaplan's departure. Following the exit of John Travolta and the internal conflicts, the show experienced a significant decline in ratings during its final season. Gabe Kaplan, due to the behind-the-scenes dramas, had a diminished role and a shift in the creative team further contributed to the downturn. This decline not only impacted the show's viewership, but also posed a challenge for its syndication package, limiting its long-term viability. In contrast to the turbulent cast changes, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs remained a consistent presence, appearing in all 95 episodes of the series. 
His steadfast commitment stood out amidst the shifting dynamics, providing a stable element throughout the show's run. These backstage struggles and cast departures, coupled with creative disputes, culminated in the decline of the show's popularity. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs' unwavering presence, however, remains a testament to the stability within the ever-changing backdrop of Welcome Back, Cotter. In a 1978 People magazine article, Marcia Strassman revealed her strained relationship with Gabe Kaplan, expressing dissatisfaction with her role on the show. She attempted to break her contract by publicly criticizing Kaplan. Upon reading the interview, Kaplan discovered that producer James Comack had been fostering animosity between them. Kaplan clarified that he wanted a better balance between Cotter's work and home, providing Strassman with more opportunities in the series. During the final season, the show faced a decline as the writing staff was replaced by seasoned comedy writers from shows like Here's Lucy, featuring older actors. Unable to deliver the fresh dialogue needed for a show centered on high schoolers, the new writers led to a rapid drop in ratings. Originally banned in Boston, the ABC affiliate hesitated due to concerns about the show being related to the contentious issue of busing. After successful test airings, the ban was lifted, and the show aired without issues in pre-prime time. Gabe Kaplan's effort to resolve conflicts with Marcia Strassman and the unfortunate replacement of the writing staff marked a challenging period for the series, contributing to its eventual decline in popularity. The show's journey reflects the complexities and challenges faced behind the scenes, impacting its trajectory. In the series, changes in key personnel significantly impacted its course. Gabe Kaplan, a driving force early on, clashed with producer James Comack in the third season, prompting Kaplan's departure after just two episodes in the final season. John Travolta's rising success in external projects led to alterations in his contract, resulting in limited appearances on the show. Originally titled Cotter, the series underwent a transformation when songwriter John Sebastian struggled with the theme song. His creation, Welcome Back, not only resolved the lyrical challenge, but also inspired a title change. The song, reaching one on the charts, became a defining element of the show. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, known for his role in the 1975 movie Cooley High, joined the Sweatogs, adding a unique dimension to the cast. These behind-the-scenes shifts, from cast departures to title changes and musical successes, shaped the trajectory of the series. Ron Palillo, the actor behind Arnold Horshack in the 1975 TV series, shaped his character with inspiration from Dustin Hoffman's Ratso Rizzo and a beloved aunt. His memorable introduction, Hello, My Name is Arnold Horshack, clinched him the role. In the opening and closing themes, a sign reading Welcome to Brooklyn, the fourth largest city in America, appeared. Originally on the eastbound Belt Parkway, it now hangs overhead in the same direction after modifications. During the fourth season, producers sought to avoid a Vinnie Barbarino copycat when replacing John Travolta. Bo emerged as a deliberate departure, contrasting with Barbarino and the Sweatogs. Bo's southern background aimed to broaden the show's appeal beyond urban markets, where ratings face challenges. Andrea McArdle took on the role of Horshack's little sister in a single episode before securing the iconic position of Broadway's original Annie. Farrah Fawcett was initially considered for the part of Julie Cotter, but producers hesitated, believing audiences wouldn't accept her as Kaplan's wife. Marcia Strassman, upon learning of this, expressed offense, questioning whether they thought she resembled Gabe Kaplan's spouse. A proposed plot to extend the series involved the Sweatogs graduating and transitioning to college, with Cotter assuming the role of a college professor. However, this concept faced rejection. The show's creators aimed for a shift in setting, but it was ultimately discarded. The dynamics behind the scenes of Welcome Back, Cotter were marked by various attempts to evolve the narrative and cast reflecting the challenges of sustaining interest in the series. These behind-the-scenes decisions, ranging from casting choices to potential plot developments, shed light on the intricate process of shaping the show's trajectory.